Hello students, in this video we'll understand the connection between the first fundamental form and surface area. Let's be given the first fundamental form of a surface. That will be E du squared plus 2f du dv plus g dv squared. We claim, we have the following theorem, proposition, the surface area, which we define to be the double integral over the parameterization region of R u cross R v du dv, is equal to, well, I want to write this in terms of the first fundamental form. So let's figure out, let's do a derivation to figure out how we figure that out, right? So we're going to use this vector identity. So recall we have this vector identity that the length of A cross B squared is equal to the length of A squared, the length of B squared minus A dot B, A dot B quantity squared. And this just follows from like the fact that this is the a length of a length of b and then times the cosine of theta and then I can pull the length of a length of b out. I get one minus cosine so squared theta which is sine squared theta which we have over here, right? So in particular what we can do is we can apply this to our identity over here. So this implies that r u cross r v is going to be what? Is going to be, I'll square it, is going to be r u is going to be the r vector, the norm r u like this the norm R V like this, and then minus R U dot R V quantity squared, like so. Now, what are these things in terms of the first and second fundamental forms, right? Well, this thing is exactly just what? That's R U dot R U. So this is exactly just going to be E, right? And this is going to be what? So that's going to be my G over there. And then this is going to be F, but F squared, right? So minus F squared, right? So now we can see exactly this is going to be the double integral over omega of just the square root of eg minus f squared, square rooted du dv like so. And so that gives me a formula for the surface area in terms of this fir uh, first fundamental form. Excellent. So let's see an example of this and how it relates to previously uh, previous formulas for surface area. So let's consider, here's an example of the application of this. Let's consider the surface of revolution. sigma of u and v. I'm just going to rotate a function f around the z equals f equals sine v, and then I'm going to put a u over here, right? So that says that what we really have over here is we're rotating the function. If, my, if z is my u, then this, uh, that's an f of z, right? So I have an f, I'm, ro I'm rotating the function, uh, um, I'm rotating the function this function f of z around the z-axis, right? And so, of course, what's going to happen over here? So let's do it. And so when my range of my rotating variables is v over here, so v goes between 0 and 2 pi, and then u goes between a and b. Like so. Great. And so that's a rotation. It's a surface revolution. And so what do we do? So let's compute the first fundamental form of this thing. So all I have to do is just do this calculation over here. So let's compute the first fundamental form. So what's my sigma u going to be? My sigma u is going to be f prime of u cosine v, f prime of u sine v, and then a one over here. What's my sigma v gonna be? My sigma v is gonna be f of u, and then sine of u with a negative sign, negative over there, then f of u cosine of v, and then I'll the, and then I get a what? Then the v derivative of the last thing is just zero over there. So let's compute what these coefficients are now. So what are we gonna have? So this implies what? So this implies that e, which is sigma u dot sigma u, is gonna be what? It's gonna be f prime squared, because it's gonna be this squared plus this squared plus this squared. So it's gonna be f prime squared, f prime of u quantity squared, then plus one, right? Like so. What is my f gonna, what's my f gonna be? My f is gonna be what? Well, let's see, if I do the dot product of these things, I'll have an f prime of u, f of u, cosine, sine, f prime of u, f prime, 
f of u cosine sine positive, so these dots is zero, so there's no inter interplays over there. And then finally, what's g gonna be? So g's gonna be the length of this thing over here, and so the g is gonna be f of u then quantity squared. Like that, excellent. And so now the surface area of the, so the surface area of revolution of a function f is given by what formula? It's given by the double integral from zero to two pi, the integral from a to b of the square root of f of u quantity squared times the quantity one plus f prime of u quantity squared du dv. And so what this is going to reduce to is it's going to reduce to the standard formula, right? It's going to reduce to my formula, which is going to be what? There's no v's to integrate, so I'm just going to get a two pi integral from a to b, and then we'll have an f of u square root of one plus f prime of u squared du. And that's our standard, of course, I'm assuming the f is not negative, you're taking the absolute values over here, but that gives me my, the standard formula we see in calc two for the surface area of revolution where I rotate a function f around an axis over here. So this gives us our surface area formula. And of course, this formula for surface area generalizes not only surface of revolution, but all sorts of different surfaces that are not necessarily surface of revolution, but this gives us a very nice derivation of the surface area formula that we've seen in calc two. Thank you very much.